have to show you the specimen of the chronic pyelonephritis. So all these specimen are, are of the chronic pyelonephritis and for that first of all you have to see the size of the kidney. So normal size of the kidney is 10 to 14 centimeter and all these are the shrunken kidney example of the shrunken kidney because chronic pyelonephritis is the one of the example of the shrunken kidney. So this is our specimen of the chronic pyelonephritis you can see the scars are there on the surface and this is the cut surface these are the pelvis this is pelvis and these are the calluses and one of the calluses showing this stone and all these calluses are dilated pelvis and calluses are dilated so there is a distortion of the pelvic calluses system and in uh, and there is a thinning of the cortex so you can there is an indistinct corto, cortico medullary junction is there so uh, in chronic pyelonephritis what will happen for, before that you have for ug student you can you just identify that this is kidney in the low power you can visualize the all these are the glomerulus this is high power you can visualize the glomerulus very well what is happening in the chronic pyelonephritis so you have to see the four things first of all what is happening in the tubules what is happening in the interstitium what is happening in the glomeruli and the last is arteries so all these I am showing is tubules so you can see few tubules are contracted and few tubules are dilated so the important thing is the lining of these tubules are flattened so there is a flattening of the lining and what we can see inside the tubule we can see the colloid like material. So we can see there is a thyroidization of the tubules. In all the tubules we can see the thyroid like uh, thyroidization or colloid like material. High power view you can see the flattening and the colloid material. So this is about the tubules. The second thing is interstitium. So what is happening in the interstitium? Interstitia is this place in between. So we can visualize the mononuclear inflammatory infiltrate all over. We can see the mononuclear inflammatory infiltrate. This is 20x. We can appreciate all these things in the low power also. Sometimes we can see the Lymphoid follicles also. Here, these are the thyroidization of the tubules. All this is interstitial. We can see the chronic inflammatory infiltrate and this is follicle. Third thing we have to see is what is happening in the glomerulus. This is glomerulus and all these glomerulus are sclerosed. You can see the sclerosis. Sclerosed glomerulus high power view you can see this is glomerulus and this is sclerosed glomerulus now fourth thing is what is happening in the arteries so all these are the arteries this is low power view this is high power view for the arteries you can see the sclerosis so arteries are sclerosed you can see the fibrosis like sclerosis like thing are there so arteries are sclerosed that's why there is a luminal narrowing is there so you can see the tubules interstitium and glomerular sclerosis and the arterial sclerosis so four thing t t i g and a I am sharing my PPT of the chronic pyelonephritis. So what is pyelonephritis? It is an inflammation. It is an inflammation that affects the tip, tubule, interstitium and the pelvis. So it is an inflammatory disorder that is going to affect the tip. It is of two forms, acute and the chronic depending on the nature of the inflammatory infiltrate and the onset. So what is etiopathogenesis? Etiology is infection and most of the time 
the kidney is going to infected by bacterial infection sometime viral infection may be there and how this infection is reaching to the kidney this is pathogenesis means the root or the mode of the infection of the kidney is either hematogenous root or ascending root so this is aorta so from the aorta to kidney the infection reaching directly but this root is less common the most common root of the infection is from ascending infection from this is urethra bladder ureter and the kidney but uh, normally the flow of the urine normally the flow of the urine is from this side but the root of the infection is from from urethra to kidney means from opposite side so the infection should not reach that you know, for that there are certain checkpoints are there but when these checkpoints are lost then this will lead to the sending infection so the less common root is hematogenous root and the most common root is ascending root for ascending root the adherence of the urethra by the bacteria is important the other is infection reaching from urethra to bladder the third is infection reaching from bladder to kidney this is bladder this is ureter this is kidney so from bladder to kidney from bladder to kidney infection can be reach via two mode either via the vesico ureteral reflex or by the obstruction so rather i can say obstruction obstructive kind of the thing and non obstructive kind of the thing in obstructive kind of the thing if certain i suppose ki stone is there or any tumor is there then the urine will not flow from kidney to ureter and the back flow of the urine will be there and the stasis of the urine will be there that's why lead to the infection also so this kind of the infection is obstructive kind of nature the other is non obstructive when vesico ureteral reflex is there uh, vesico ureteral reflex is ki normally the vesico ureteral wall is there at the bladder and the level of the ureter this wall allow the flow of the urine from kidney to bladder but when this wall is not functioning when this wall is not functioning then there is a retrograde flow of the urine from bladder to kidney so infection will reach from the ureter to kidney all these are the mode of the infection so hematogenous root as the ascending root hematogenous root is less common the other is ascending in ascending i can say obstructive kind of the uh, obstructive kind of the nature and the non obstructive kind of the nature in non obstructive comes the vesico ureteral reflex and in obstructive kind of uh, things come the obstruction in form of calculi tumor coming to the chronic pyelonephritis what is chronic pyelonephritis it is a complex disorder in which chronic tubulo interstitial inflammation and is scarring why there is a scarring because it is a chronic process and in a chronic process uh, will happen the scarring because of the fibrosis so scarring involves the calluses and the pelvis so involvement of the calluses and the pelvis is hallmark feature of the chronic pyelonephritis because tubule and the interstitial can be altered in the other disease also but pelvic calcial damage is only seen in chronic pyelonephritis and analgesic nephropathy so involvement of the pelvic calcial damage is important now on the basis of the pathogenesis in pathogenesis i told you in detail chronic pyelonephritis on pathogenesis divided into two form non obstructive pyelonephritis and obstructive if it is happening 
pyelonephr chronic pyelonephritis is happening because of the non obstructive kind of the thing because of the vesico ureteral reflex or intra reflex then it is called non obstructive or rather we can say reflex reflex nephropathy back flow because of the incompetence of the vesico ureteral valve the other obstruction obstruction may be because of the tumor this is this is ureter or any uh, this conducting system any tumor is there inside any calcula is there or from outside pressure is there this will lead to the obstruction so this will called as a obstructive pyelonephritis now grossly how kidney look like normally this is kidney this is normal this is a uh, ureter this is pelvis and this is calyces this is normal conducting pathway and this is and this is renal parenchyma this is cortex and this is medulla this is medullary pyramid this is tip of the pyramid i can say it is a papilla and this is cortex medulla and the portion of the cortex dipping down is called columns of the bertini so what is happening in the chronic pyelonephritis grossly coarse coarse scar will be there on the kidney coarse scar how this coarse scar will look like as a depression means this is kidney this is kidney and coarse scar will look like depression on the kidney because underlying fibrosis may be there so we can say if we look from outside then there is a pitting kind of thing or depression may be there but these are not symmetrical means few scar may be here few here means there are not symmetrical in not a symmetrical manner but if symmetrical uh, involvement is there this is feature of the chronic glomerulonephritis the other important thing is cortico medullary junction cm cortico medullary junction is indistinct we cannot appreciate in this di diagram we can appreciate cortex and medulla very well because pelvis is a uh, pelvic calyces system is not altered but when pelvic calyces system is altered then we will not distinguish cortex and medulla so cortex cortico medullary junction is indistinct because of the distortion of the pelvic calyces system the cortex is thinned out in this diagram you will appreciate more ki there are scar scar are there and the underlying fibrosis is there that's why there is a scar so i can see a pit over the kidney two kind of the chronic pyelonephritis because of the vesico ureteral reflex and the um, because of the obstruction if it is because of the vesico ureteral reflex then polar involvement of the kidney will be there and pole means more poles are going to be involved if it is obstructive kind of the uropathy then hydronephrosis will be there means if the obstruction is there this will lead to the hydronephrosis and the all the poles means upper upper portion lower portion and middle all the part of the kidney are equally involved so ultimately grossly pelvic calyces system is going to dilated we can see this yellow part all the pelvic calyces system is going to dilate and the renal parenchyma <clears throat> this is renal green part is renal parenchyma this renal parenchyma is going to atrophied wherever there is a scar there is a atrophy of the renal parenchyma so there is a atrophy of the renal parenchyma just we are revising there are scar cortico medullary junction is indistinct distortion of the pelvic calyces system and cortex is thinned out now what is happening in the microscopy in the form of what is uh, seen in tubules interstitium glomeruli and artery you have to see these four thing tubules 
some of the tubules are dilated, some are contracted, but the epithelium, the tubule will be flattened and the eosinophilic cast inside the tubules will be seen. What is happening in the interstitium? Chronic inflammatory infiltrate in the fibrosis and the glomeruli, there is a periglomerular fibrosis and in the artery also artery sclerosis. You have to see the four things. So this, this is the low power view. You can see the chronic inflammatory infiltrate. This is high power. You can appreciate well the chronic inflammatory infiltrate. In this, the dilated tubules are there with the eosinophilic cast. So this was all about chronic pyelonephritis. Thank you.